just pivoting around that 18,000 mark on the index. The Adani Group is under pressure. The Nifty is tanked 200 points, Sensex lower by 650 points. Nifty is down 196 points. We also have the Bank Nifty which is the biggest loser. The market's picked up uh, a little bit in terms of uh, the uh, losses. Uh, we are uh, down, we're down 180, 190 points. The market is down 200 points lower, 17,911. Uh, the, it's a pretty poor close, all said. Hello and welcome to CNBC TV 18. You're watching Markets Today, the show where we track six hours of the day's trading action in just five headlines. I'm Marjorie D'Souza. Let's get straight to the headlines for the day. Stock markets post the biggest fall in a month. The Sensex loses nearly 800 points. The Nifty loses 200 points. All sectoral indices end in the red. Financials drag while auto stocks support. An upbeat guidance followed by inline quarter helps TVS Motor raise 5% higher. Meanwhile, Bajaj Auto beats estimates in its third quarter as the profits rise nearly 23%. EBITDA is at record highs thanks to judicious pricing and better dollar realization. Pitilite's third quarter numbers miss estimates on all front. The volume growth comes in at 1% in comparison to the 3-4% to that was projected. The company, however, remains optimistic on demand in future. SBI Cards also sulks after reporting a disappointing third quarter that saw the net interest margins come in at all-time lows. While United Spirit slumps 5% as costs weigh on margins amid lower revenues for the past quarter. Adani Group stocks fall after Hindenburg Research raises concern over valuations and debt. Hindenburg also reveals short positions in Adani Group companies. Adani Group accuses Hindenburg of malified intent and calls the charges stale, baseless and discredited allegations. Production concerns help metal prices higher. However, strengthening dollar keeps prices in check. Metal stocks, though, close with marginal gains. Well, here's the lineup that we have for you on the show. It's a power-packed one, as always. In market opinion, we have Mir Bora of Max Life Financial, while in corporate voices, we have Rama... Mohan Rao Amara of the MD and CEO at SBI Cards. Well, let's start off with the day's market action then. The stock markets, well, they saw a sharp sell off today with every sectoral index ending in the red. The Sensex was down close to 800 points. The Nifty lost close to 200 points. Bank stocks, well, they took it on the chin and mid caps were not spared either. Prashant is standing by to run us through with the day's market action. Prashant? Well, it was deep red, the market losing 200 points in the Nifty. And if you're looking for one reason, uh, a dominating driver, I don't think there's one to be found. It was a combination of things. Uh, global queues overnight were poor. The market here has been underperforming global markets all of this year. Perhaps a little bit of nervousness ahead of the budget, which is in the middle of next week. So all of this combined adding to uh, the pressure that we are seeing. Uh, banks were uh, also sold off pretty hard, perhaps more uh, on banks as compared to non-banks. Nifty losses coming through in uh, Adani ports and the Adani group was another sort of pocket of pressure for the market. We'll get to more stocks in a bid. SBI was down, Sipla was down, Indusin, the HDFC twins were also sharply lower. Bajaj stood out at uh, gain, but the numbers uh, reacting towards the end. The numbers came out for the third quarter. Numbers look good. Lever, Hindalco were the other stocks which uh, were higher. Market breadth was extremely negative, so I'll stick with lo losses. As I said, the Adani pack came under selling pressure. Adani Wilmar, Transmission, uh, Green, uh, Ambuja Cement, ACC, uh, all seeing some sell uh, selling. Zomato, um, United Spirits, Container Corporation, a fair bit of earnings disappointments also resulting to uh, selling. Like, for example, in the case of United Spirits, Indus Tower was another earnings-led re reaction. Tracks in the recent IPO, Kiri Industries were some of the other volume-led losses that we saw. The range this year has been 17,800 and 18,200, and today's selling gets us closer to the lower end of the range. The big support for the Nifty comes in around 17,761, which is the low which was made in January earlier. And for the bank Nifty, it's looking a little more precarious. It did break intraday the December 26th swing low, but we managed to close above it. When we come back day after, I think bulls will hope that these levels are defended with some help, of course, from global markets. Thanks for that, Prashant. Well, moving to the second headline now. Auto majors are in focus today with TVS Motors, Bajaj Auto, both of them reporting their numbers for the third quarter. Sonia standing by to run us through the wrap-up on all those three stocks. Sonia? 
Well, thanks a lot for that. So, Bajaj Auto just came out with their numbers a while back. The numbers were better than what the street was estimating. In fact, it was a good growth of almost 23% on the profitability for Bajaj Auto. But the big positive really came on the margin front. So, the margins have improved to 19.1% versus 15.2%. And the EBITDA, the core EBITDA has gone up by almost 30%, coming in at 1,776 crores. The management says this is a record high EBITDA that they have delivered this time around. And a couple of reasons that they have mentioned for the uh, solid EBITDA beat. One is judicious pricing, two is better dollar realizations, and three is a richer product mix that has aided the margins this time around. Uh, so better than expected numbers and a strong operational performance, I expect the stock to trend up as we open on Friday. Now the other stock in focus today definitely was CVS Motor. Very good set of numbers coming in, but I think what the street really liked is the management commentary and the stock ended well in the green up about 6 to 7 percent. Now this time around strong revenue growth of 14 percent for TVS Motor. You even had uh, the margins that were consistently above 10 percent for the fifth consecutive quarter uh, and the profitability as well was up 22 percent. But what the street liked is the aggression from the management in the electric vehicle space. They spoke about how there's an improvement in the margin profile in Q4 as well because of raw material tailwinds and they are planning to aggressively expand their electric vehicle franchise by adding multiple products across price points in the next 12 to 18 months. So good showing coming in from the two-wheeler majors. Back to you. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot for that, Sonia. Moving to the third headline today, Pidilai. That stock was down close to 3% after its third quarter numbers missed estimates on all fronts. The volumes came in at just a percent. That compared with projections of around 3 to around 4%. The company, however, remains optimistic on demand as well as margin expansion in the near future. Manglam joins us to run us through those details. Manglam? Well, as far as bid light numbers are concerned, they were weak, no two ways about it. As compared to our estimates and uh, the street numbers year on year as well, they were, uh, you know, rather weak. 5% jump in the revenue year on year, but as compared to street estimates, they were lower by almost 4% as well. The EBITDA came in shy of 500 crores. We were working with a number upwards of 580 odd crores. As a result of which, the margins and the net profits, both of them were below expectations. The consumer business volumes grew just 1% as against street expectations of 3 to 4%. And the gross margins, while well, they improved, a little sequentially the management said that you know they were still sitting on high cost inventory inventory as a result of which there wasn't full improvement uh, but thereafter we had a conversation with them and uh, this is what Bharat Puri told CNBC TV 18 that while primary sales were weak because of high inventory in the base secondary sales which is what consumers buy of stores was actually as per expectations and from this quarter itself they are likely to see improvement in the numbers and for the fourth quarter they do target high single digit to perhaps double digit volume growth and they are yet to see some recovery in rural and semi-urban markets but uh, you know the key raw material that they have vinyl acetate monomer VAM those prices have settled at around $1,200 as well. Back in the peak, they were close to around $2,500. So all this bodes well for their business in the near future and the medium term. However, today it's weak on account of weak third quarter numbers. Okay, all right, Manglam, thanks for that. Well, moving on, SPI Cards was down close to around 2% in trade after posting a disappointing set of numbers. The net interest margins came at around 11.6%, which was an all-time low. We spoke to Mr. Rama Mohan Rao Amara, the MD and CEO of SBI Card. He said that the cost of funds will increase by around 30 to 40 bips and NIMS will stabilize in the fourth quarter of this fiscal. Let's hear him out. The cost of funds will increase, uh, but we have observed most of these uh, uh, repricing, etc. So next quarter, we will be seeing maximum like a 30 to 40 basis point further increase in the uh, cost of funds. NIM will fairly stabilize, maybe 10 basis points here and there, that movement can be there. But uh, we are fairly confident that actually NIM will stabilize in the next quarter at the current level. Current level. Well, United Spirits, that one was down close to 5% in trade. It weighed down by pressure of costs on margins and lower revenues as well. Surbi is with us to run us through a quick uh, review of those numbers. Surbi? The revenue growth is just 10% on a year-on-year -year basis at 2781 crores and that is also largely led by increase in, pri uh, increase in prices on a year-on-year -year basis. Gross margins are under pressure. The gross margins are impacted by the high input cost inflation and is down 400 basis points. This has trickled down to EBITDA as well, which is down 12.4% and margins are down 340 basis points. The company has spent 150 crores on a supply chain agility program, which affects their profitability uh, as well. If you exclude that, the PBT is down 3% 3 at 303 crores. 
Now, usually Q3 is really good for United Spirits because of the festive season, but both the segments, premium and popular, have just seen a volume growth of 3 odd percent. The realizations of the premium segment is up 8 percent and that has led to major uh, majority of the revenue growth. The popular segment realizations is down 1 percent on a year-on-year -year basis. The company has sold stake in its wholly owned subsidiary, Sovereign Distilleries, for 32 crores and also made an additional investment in now uh, spirits and distilleries for 15 crores. The management has commented that they expect the inflationary headwinds to continue for the shorter term, so the stock could see some pressure. Thanks, Surbe, for that. Well, staying with earnings then, Pharma Major Sipla reported a weak set of numbers for the third quarter. They missed treat estimates on all fronts. Well, the revenues as well missed estimates. Came in at around 5,800 crores. The analysts were anticipating a number of close to around 6,200 crores odd. Sipla's margins were in line with expectations, coming in at around 24% odd. Moving on to Dr. Reddy's, well, it beat estimates in the third quarter. The profit uh, came in at more than 1,200 crore rupees. That was well above expectations. The profit growth was more than 75%. Revenue growth was more than 27%, and margins were well above what the street estimated. So, a mixed set of numbers coming in from both those two. But in Indastars, that stock was down close to around 6 to around 7% in trade after the company posted a loss of more than 700 crores for the first time. Rima's with us to run us through what went wrong with those numbers. Rima? Thanks so much for that. So as you pointed out, Indastars has reported a loss for the first time ever, a loss of 708 crores in Q3. This is on the back of the company making a doubtful debt provision of 2,300 crore rupees against receivables from one of the leading telcos. Indastars does not explicitly mention which telco it is, but uh, the understanding is it's Vodafone Idea, which has been unable to be making its payments to uh, Indastars. Um, so this is the third consecutive quarter that Indastars has written off some receivables from Vodafone Idea, and now cumulatively in nine months, Indastars has written off close to about 5,700 crore rupees. Uh, consequently, uh, financials are under pressure, revenues down 2% quarter on quarter, margins have come down to 17.5% and the company has reported a big loss of 708 crores. Thanks Rima for that. Well, Tata Motors reported its performance for the third quarter after market hours. So, Sonia is here once again to run us through a quick analysis on those numbers. Sonia? Well, thanks a lot for that. You know, it's looking like a very good set of numbers that Tata Motors has reported on a consolidated basis. It's a beat and JLR, the performance is also quite good. So consolidated numbers, revenues have gone up 22.5%, coming in at 88,488 crores, higher than estimated. EBITDA has gone up 52.9% and the margins have improved on a consolidated basis to 10% versus 9.4% earlier. Now, it's a big profit beat. Of course, you know, the, the poll generally, it's much higher than the poll, but generally because of the forex fluctuations, it's a bit hard to determine what the profitability of Tata Motors could be. This time around, compared to a loss of 1,500 crores same time last year, Tata Motors has returned to profitability in a big way. So, there is a profit of 2,957 crores. Now, what the street will also like is the fact that JLR has delivered on its plans and achieved a positive free cash flow and profitability in the quarter as supplies of semiconductors have improved. The revenues for JLR went up 28% uh, at 6 billion euros and up 15% sequentially and the EBIT margin has improved um, uh, to 3.7 percent this time up from 1.4 percent in Q3 of last year so there is a significant improvement that we've seen in the JLR performance as well uh, just wanted to quickly take you through what the outlook of Tata Motors is from the management they say they remain cautiously optimistic on the demand situation despite global uncertainties will remain vigilant on demand and margin improvement and positive cash delivery will continue in Q4 as well so I think the street will definitely react positively to these earnings back to you thanks for that Sonia well time to slip into a short break but you stay with us we'll be back in the jiffy with the remainder of the headlines